is Move Art Studio. Today's project is something that I dug out of a cupboard. I kept it as a memory of our first year in Canada, which actually was going to be our only year in Canada and 20 years later we are still here. But it made its way, as I said, into the back of a cupboard and I was rearranging my studio. I'm still busy with that. And I found it and then I was thinking, oh, you know what, rather than let it just lie there, why don't I turn it into an art piece and I can really look at it. It's not exactly the same, at least it will bring back memories and I can look at it every day. And yes, I'm talking about an ordinary frisbee. Um, we bought this one the year that we came to Canada and um, I know it's this one from the dollar store because I wrote the the date and things in here because it was going to go back with us and as I said we're still here so yeah I'm going to turn this into a keepsake art piece. Join me and see how I'm going to do this. For today's project we're not going to need a lot. We're going to need our metal tape and I'm going to be working with thick metal tape as of recording of this video which is January 20, 22nd this metal tape is still not available in the Esmeric Art Store. However, it will be available soon. So just keep on checking back. What's nice about this metal tape is it is about 8 inches wide and it is 100 micron thick. So it is quite a bit thicker than the standard um, metal tape that you would purchase in a um, you know the hardware store I use that quite a bit but for this one I really want something sturdy so we're going to need our metal tape we're going to need the cutouts and the cutouts that I did was I just did it on my silhouette is I did the maple leaf and I did the word um, Canada I cut that out as well as the year that I bought this frisbee and then for tools we're going to need basic tools the paper stumps we're going to need a teflon tip tool or this plastic little stylus we're going to need a texture wheel or anything that you have that you can use to make texture with a little roller as well as the scissors just so we can actually cut the metal tape and then we're also going to need sanding paper so i have uh 120 and an 80 here i'm not sure which one i'm going to use maybe i'll use both and the reason for that is just for the metal tape to adhere you need something to have to give it a grip you can also put gesso on here um, and then the metal tape will work with that as well but I just thought well for today I'm just going to sand as for the back I, I was thinking of doing something on the back and I decided no it's going to be hanging up I'm just going to leave it red so then at least I have something and again the dollar store sticker is still on there okay shall we get started so I'm starting with the 80 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to go over it and I'm just going to sand it. Oh, I know it's making a really big noise. And um, I just want to try and see if I go with the 80. What difference does that make? Uh, no, I definitely think, oh, the 120, I mean, no, I think I'll stick with the 80. So I'm going to sand down this whole thing and then I will be back with the next step. On the last stretch and um, so there you go. I'm just going to wipe this down. I guess you can get a, a wet cloth or a damp cloth, I should rather say, to wipe this down. But I'm just going to use my hands and um oh there is a kleenex here why don't i just use that as well and then where all the sanding droppings has gone um i just want to mention i did sand it on the inside as well i haven't made my decision yet whether i'm going to fold the tape over or not but for in case i do decide to fold it over it has been sanded there that so that's clean and i'm just gonna get my little vacuum and quickly vacuum up the dust from the sanding these are really little handy um little vacuum cleaners i got them from the dollar store 
I'm really a big fan of the dollar store when it comes to things like this. Okay, so on to the next step. When I went over the supply list, I neglect to mention some kind of glue or um, double-sided tape. And that is just so that you can adhere your um, design or your motifs that you would like to stand out um, down here onto to get it onto the board. And I'm just using double-sided sequong tape and... These are all off cuts that I have when I'm busy working and so they actually came in very handy for things like that or things like this I should say. And you don't really have to overdo it, it's just so that it can stay down. This one is going to be the easy one. The letters and the numbers might not be so easy. So think about what you have in your cupboard that, you know, you got from when you were traveling or on a vacation and you were thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to keep this as a memory or a memorabilia or a keepsake. And um, it just made its way back into a cupboard, to the back of a cupboard. Think about what you have and get it out and try and do something like this where you can actually use it and just have it in your house where you can see it and then you can really think about that so okay these ones um even if there is i think what i'm going to do with these ones i'm just gonna put pieces down like that because it doesn't really matter that there is going to be pieces that is going to be um, sticking out because the metal tape is going to cover it and that will work easier than what you are really going to try and do everything or all the letters by hand or one by one I should actually say move this one on here there and you can always just add some as you are going i oh, know that one i just pulled up the whole thing i love the sit wong tape but sometimes it can be really difficult to get it off or you keep on pulling the whole thing off oh, there you go as i mentioned in the end when i started this video we came on a my husband came for to help out with a project in um canada for one year and was up in fort mcmurray and well we never went back oh, i won't say we never went back but it just ended up that they asked him to stay on for another project and then for another project and then for another project. Um, and then in the end, as I said, 20 years later, we are still here. Oh, I'm missing another A. There you go. And the year that we came to Canada was 2001. So just spacing this out more or less so this is the center yeah um so let's just see i'm going to start with the o okay i'll do it around about there oh, i'm gonna think i'm gonna turn this one around so it almost looks like they're slanting out. And so there you go. Ooh, they might be a little bit too close to get in our all day down now. So that's going to be okay.
Okay, so the 2001 is down and I'm going to do exactly the same with the Canada on top. So once you have your design, whether it's your, and uh, this A is the wrong way around. I'm just doing it around. That one was easy to remove. So once you have your design or your words or whatever your choice is down, the next step is we are just going to start working with the metal tape. When you work with the metal tape, you can decide beforehand whether you want to do strips that is exactly the same or, you know, and cut them ahead of time and have them just ready to use. Or you can just fly by the seats of your pants and just cut them as you are going. So I think I would like to have the um, the maple leaf almost smooth. So I think for that, what I'll do is I'm just going to measure more or less how big I would like that to be. And then I'm just going to cut that out. Oops. And so I'll just cut the piece out like this. Yeah, I think this should do it. And it doesn't really matter whether it is round. Actually, I think I'm going to do mine round. Let me see if I have a circle stencil that is going to work for this. Okay, so I found one of my handy dandy stencils uh, i think this is still from my card making and scrapbooking years um okay yeah so this one this one is a little bit it's just just too tight and this one is actually slightly big but i think i'm going to use this one and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to trace it and then i'm going to cut oops and then I'm going to cut it on the inside and it won't be completely round because I'm one of those people that can't even cut a straight line. I don't know if you can do that or in this case, you know, as you're looking for something, you will have it, but then it's either just, just too big or just, just too small, never the right size. Even with paper, if you're looking for a specific colors, um, like green, for instance, I find that I will have all the shades of green except the shade that I really would like to have. Okay, so yeah, I think this one is going to work. It is so nice to see sun, actually. We have been bombarded with snow here in Canada, um, especially in BC. <laughs> and we had yesterday and the day, well, over this whole week, we had about 10, 20 inches of snow. We actually snowed in. We can't go out our driveway. Our tractor that we have can't even move the snow on the road so we're waiting for a snow removal company to come they all they said was they add us to the list so when they're going to get to us they will get to us but they can't promise when that's going to be so i've cut out the circle and i've removed the backing and the next thing is i'm just going to put down the tape and i'm going to start working it in with my finger And this tape, as I said, mentioned, it is about 100 micron. It does not tear as easily as the ones that you are getting from the um, hardware stores. And the specific ones will be available in the Esmeric Art online store soon. Next is just coming in with the my paper stump. And just going around the design and again you know it doesn't matter which design you are going to choose for the item that you are going to find in the cupboard and bring it out into the open you know the the memory that you would like to have so next i'm just coming in with my stylus and I'm just going to accentuate or refine around. And this is the same when you do metal embossing. 
So you're going to do exactly the same as what you do with metal embossing, refining it so that it just gives it a neat and tidy look. And you are going to go all around doing this. And this is why I really like working with the thick tape, because you can really get in there and work with it. You're going to actually do embossing with this tape as well and fill it with hot glue if you don't have metal to work with. And I'm just going to wrap this. Actually, I'm going to think I'm going to use the roller. And I'm just going to roll this down. So I'm going to add detail to everything around it. And that's why I was thinking of keeping the maple leaf smooth. Oops, there goes the A. Um, and now I see I've missed the tippy there, but that does not matter. Okay. So my first one is down. And now with the same as with any other metal embossing project, we're just going to start building it out and see where this takes us. So next, and this is like I said in the beginning, this is where you can start, you know, cutting strips to have it available for once you start working. And I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a couple of strips um, just to have them handy and then we can start building out and placing them as we go along. So I've got a couple of strips and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this one There's actually two of them more or less in half and then just going to start putting them down. I was thinking doing it like this. Really working it in. Again, this is why I really like working with this, the thicker tape. Because you can really get in the nitty gritty of things. And And this is one thing as well, when you have these creases and things, it doesn't really matter because once we're going to do the blackening, oh, and that's another thing that I forgot to add to the supply list was the, um, the black permanent water base marker is then it will pick up on all these little grooves and it really just gives it some extra character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the strips in like that and then we will move on to the next step. is as I was working um, with that one the strip that went out longer the double-sided tape I didn't really care for it so then I just lifted up the tape and I removed it so I think before I continue on I'm actually just quickly going to lift these ones up and just remove it so that we don't have these things and these are things that I know happened before but um, yeah sometimes we just forget the things that we know and but again you know 
if it stayed behind it would have just add some extra interest so it wouldn't have been a train smash if it had stayed behind but i just don't want to have these random straight pieces sticking out so i'm just going to remove the rest of these and then i will continue on with the or remove this and then continue on and i'll quickly add that one too and then we can start back and start using or placing the smaller pieces of the tape that we're going to use so once we are this far it is just going to be cutting smaller pieces and start filling up all the gaps i think what i'll do is i'll do this one two three and do i have one that is more or less the same thickness yep this one will work um, and get them more or less the same length okay so placing the next section so it will be the same all around we're just going to place it work it in and then once we have everything done and down that is when we're really going to start working in the metal and add some extra texture and designs to our project up all the gaps and now it is only these small pieces that needs to be filled up and again you know when you work on your project it all depends whether you want to go sort of symmetrical doing it the same you can also just go random and put them down you know one there a triangle here um, a rectangle next to that it doesn't really matter it is all up to you how you would like um to do that the main thing is just when you work with metal tape make sure that it does overlap um, you might have noticed on the parts that are fast forward that there was a area that i've actually lifted it up because it was right next to each other and it didn't overlap and that is not good so yeah just make sure that it does overlap so i'm going to fill up the last spots here so everything has been covered. I don't see any red peeping out. And so now it's just going to go back in and accentuate around each and every letter or the design, whichever one you have used for your um, memory or keepsake art piece. And once we have done that then it is just going to go in with the little plastic stylus i call it my little wonder tool i always wonder how i could have done metal embossing without it i think i've mentioned this specifically a couple of times before it is really a very nice little tool to have and what is so nice is you can actually use the back side which is actually an eraser for, or a metal eraser you can use that one as well and this is another reason why I like working with the um, the thicker metal tape is because you really have to work very hard before you break through the thinner metal tape it's 
easy to break through. Not that it's a problem because you just layer on another piece of the metal tape and it is fixed. But if you want to be a little bit heavy handed, the thick metal tape is definitely the way to go. Something I just want to point out is when you work or refining with the tape, always look at the direction in which the tape is overlapping so that you don't go and you know in the different direction because this one you would go to this that one is overlapping that way so you will work down and then this one is overlapping that way so you will go once you have done your initial it will be okay if you go opposite sides but always pay attention personally i just stick with the way you know so that you can work with the tape and not against the tape it's it's like with everything else in life work with the things don't try and work against it okay so i've gone around with my little purple stylus and next i'm just going to use my teflon tip which has a little bit um, sharper end and i'm just going to go in there and quickly realign everything do you need to do this step it is absolutely optional for you i always say have a look at your project and you will know whether you need to do an additional step or whether the steps that you have done already has been enough or sufficient and again while you do that pay attention to the way that your tape is overlapping okay so gonna go and roll on all where I see there is joints to make sure especially when it goes around the areas on the bends because sometimes you know with the, the thick metal tape when you go on a bend or a rounding it feels like you needed that extra little thing but it does work so well. Okay. If you don't have a ruler, a oh, ruler, a roller, if you don't have a roller, there's so many other things that you can use. You can use a paper stump. You can even use, if you have, you know, a piece of round wood, you can either use that as well. It doesn't really matter. As long as what you have something that you can apply pressure, and just make sure that you get everything good down. I'm gonna lift this up and do it here on the side too. I think I'll go around again because when I started, I didn't move it over to the over the fold i didn't roll it over the fold i should say now metal tape is definitely becoming more and more popular to work with and the possibilities with this thick tape is absolutely unbelievable i will do a video later on on how you can actually emboss using the thick metal tape if you don't have pewter or aluminum to work with. And you can fold the back as well. I, I wouldn't suggest use beeswax for that, but the ones that I've done so far, I have fought with my hot glue gun and they work perfectly. They're still intact. Okay, so I think there was a piece that was peeping out. Just keep on checking back and see and make sure that you do have everything and that it is nice down. So next is we're going to add some details and decorations. I'll, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with the back yet. Um, 
sometimes I do my projects and then I just let it sit for a day or two and then come up with an idea. So on to the next step. So as I was getting my tool handy to start accentuating the where the tape overlap, I realized I've never did this. So, and this is refining the circle or the indentation that the Frisbee is making. Okay. So I'm gonna do that. And I think I'm going to try and see if I use this. Oh yes, this is working. So the Frisbee has this natural lines that was there. So oh, it's a little bit time consuming, but I still think I'm going to do that to bring out those lines just for added texture. So I'm gonna work my way all around. And I'm just going to, oh, maybe if I use, oh yeah, this one is gonna work better. That is actually slightly thinner. And there will still be some parts that is most probably gonna be missed. And I'm gonna use the the overlapping of the tape as a guide on where to stop and I'm not going to work on the where they overlap so going into the next section here and I'm quickly going to work my way around the frisbee accentuating the natural texture it has provided us well going around and you know going into all those designs took way or texture took way longer than what i anticipated but now it's done i did say in the beginning i'm not going to go where the tape overlap but I've noticed that some places it overlaps way more than others and it just looked weird. So I thought, you know what, while you're busy, just go for it and do everything. So the next thing I'm going to do is just accentuate where there is um, some of the overlappings and there's different ways that you can do it you can use a texture wheel you can use anything like that i'm just going to use the back part of a cup and ball tool and you know what it's not really working i think because it's a little bit flimsy there's nothing holding it back yeah no this is not going to work esme so let me just see if i can find something else that i can use for this couldn't find something else but i came up with a solution just holding my finger at the bottom and having some support makes a difference and now all of a sudden there you go if i can do it properly i have my little circles so again i'm going to go around all of these and i am quickly going to accentuate all the joints that i have here now that all the um overlapping has been marked and i just left it like as is on there the next thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to use a texture wheel and i'm just going to add some texture to the bottom part here and I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it's not going to be oops it's not going to be a lot of texture that is going to be visible there but at least it will be noticeable and I'm using a diagonal wheel let me just see if I use the smaller one um, yeah actually the smaller one goes a little bit no, I think I'm going to go back to the bigger one and just do this. So again, I'm just going to run it down. I wonder if I run it sideways. Oh yeah, no, sideways actually works so much better. So I'm going to run it sideways 
on um, small sections and so I'm just going to go all around looking at my frisbee after I've added some texture to the side and texture there um, I would like to keep the center part um, plain but I really think I need to do something in here so I think I'm going to go in with my stylus and I am just going to add some texture there and what I'm doing is when I do metal embossing I have this little design that I would do and then I would just fall in in between there and this is exactly what I'm going to do now and it is just random um, designs that I do I think I have about four or five of them and then I just fall in as I said all the gaps afterwards so I'll do this one now and then for the rest I will do off camera and this is nice to use you know something as a filler that is sort of so almost like your signature kind of thing and I know I have a leaf in there as well those are the ones that I use and let's have a leaf there and let's do a small little flower in here and one of those peeking out there so when I'm at this point all I would do is I would just fill in all the gaps with lines go come closer and then you can see and it is literally just random filling it in wherever I see a little opening that is where i would go in and continue with that see where i have these smaller areas i'm not going to go in with that i will just do some lines and look at your design and you know decide what is going to be working with your design and even if it's as I said in the beginning, you know, a memorabilia that you brought with from a, from a vacation or something. But if not, just pick, pick up a um, frisbee from your dollar store. And I think this will actually make really good gifts. I would definitely pay attention to the bag and not just leave it, you know, ugly like this. Um and you can just use some gesso, paint it a specific color, but definitely I would do um, something to the back. And again, it's such an easy gift for somebody as well. So I've gone all around and I have done all my fillers. And there you can see the design. Oh, it's so shiny. It's really difficult to pick up on all the details. But I'll go and try and go as best as what I can. But there you can see that. And on the smaller areas, I just did some scratch marks. And in the, as the same as with those small areas over there. And for the background around the maple leaf, I just did sort of some crisscrosses as well. Or like, you know resembling plaid or something like that i don't really know but the maple leaf itself i just kept shiny so next step is we're going to add our blackening and then our project will be completed for the blackening you are going to need a um, permanent water base marker and the reason for that is because once we've put it on we need to wipe it off again if you use a permanent marker an alcohol based one you won't be able to wipe it off so there's different um, brands that's on the market for this i'm going to start from the center and then i'm going to work my way out because i don't want to cover everything 
in one go as it might dry because again although it is water-based it is still a permanent marker so eventually it does turn permanent that you can't um, wipe it off so i'll work section for section and it's literally like color in and wipe it on uh, or wipe it off I think I've mentioned before, it's very similar to the karate kit from, you know, wipe on, wipe off. I always think about that um, when I do the blackening on metal tape. Or sometimes I even use it on pewter or aluminum, definitely, because you can't use the patina on there. And then it is just, you're going to wipe off and choose the direction that you would like to wipe it off and stay in the same direction so again i did put some on my um the maple leaf and although i wipe most of it off there is still a hint here and there that there has been some blackening as well and again with the blackening it all depends you know on pers its personal preference it all depends on how much you would like to have on do you prefer a more blackish or aged look or do you prefer a more shiny look it is going to be different for each and every one okay so i'm going to go around and i'm going to start section by section I just think it's going to be easier to do it that way than what it is going to try and, as I mentioned, do the whole one in one go. So I think I'll do this two sections. And it's been a dry, starting to go dry. I usually have about two or three paints handy, um, especially when they start drying out. And the, the water-based markers is available from the Esmeric Art Store. And again, I'm just gonna turn it around so that I'm still wiping in the same direction. Yeah. Blackening is all done. And now we can actually see the, um, the filler design better because with the blackening, it has gone and it stayed behind. And again, you know, as for the blackening, it all depends how black you would like it to have, how shiny would you like it to be. Um, so the letters, my wording, the Canada 2001, as well as my maple leaf, I just try to keep as shiny as what I can. So what I also did was, in the back, I just covered it with metal tape and I also had a little bit of red that is peeking out there I decided not to cover it and I just wrote quickly about the sort of the history of this um, frisbee and um, yeah so now the project is done I have another project in mind for the studio and I was really thinking about what I can use as a substrate and while I was working with the blackening on this um, little frisbee metal tape frisbee I was thinking brilliant the frisbee is going to be a perfect um, blank or substrate to use for this project so as soon as i start on that project i will let you know and um, yeah and then we can all see how that one is going to be turning out so i'm going to be using it will be either three or four frisbees and definitely i've learned with this that you know, anything can be a substrate. It doesn't matter what it is. I personally never would have thought using a frisbee for a substrate. So thank you so much for spending time with me in the studio. And always remember, the world of reality has its limits, but the world of imagination is boundless.